At its core, digital audio is just data. When recorded, sound waves are converted into sequences of numbers. These values, called samples, are what make up an audio file. Through programming, we can access and modify these samples. Today, we'll explore the basics of how we can use Python to work with audio wave files. We'll be using three external libraries. NumPy, which allows us to efficiently process audio samples as numerical arrays. SciPy, which provides tools for modifying audio data. And SoundDevice, which lets us play sound directly from our program. If you haven't installed them yet, you can do this using pip. At the top of our script, we'll import numpy as np, scipy.io.wave file as wave. This is a submodule of scipy's input output module for reading and writing wave files. scipy.signal as signal, used to perform signal processing, and sound device as sd. The wave module provides a read function that allows us to load a wave file. It returns a tuple. The first element tells us the audio sample rate per second, and the second element is a NumPy array containing all the audio samples that make up the sound. I've saved a wave file within the current directory. We'll define two variables to store the sample rate and the audio data, and use wave.read to load the file. We can use the print function to uncover some key details about the audio file. We'll print the sample rate, the shape of the data, and the data type. When we run the program, we see the sample rate per second, the shape of the data, which tells us how many samples are in the file, and the dimension of the array. Two dimensions indicates that this is in stereo format. And the data type, which is a 16-bit integer. This will be important later. To play the audio, we can use sd.play, passing in the data array as the sequence of audio samples and defining the sample rate with our sample rate variable. We'll call sd.wait to ensure the program waits for the audio to finish playing before exiting. Now when we run the program, we'll hear the original sound that was encoded in the WAV file. But since we have direct access to the audio samples themselves, let's explore what else we can do to the sound. If the audio we're working with is in stereo format, we can, if desired, convert it to mono. First, we'll need to check whether we are dealing with a stereo file. A stereo WAV file will be represented by a 2D NumPy array, where each row corresponds to a sample, and the two columns represent the left and right audio channels. We can determine this by checking if the length of data.shape is equal to 2. If the audio is in stereo, we'll convert it to mono by averaging the two channels using np.mean. We'll specify that we want to average the data array across axis 1 to compute the mean across columns, combining the left and right audio channels into a single value per sample. Since we've already established that our array is of type int16, we must ensure that the result of np.mean matches this. To do this, we'll use dtype equals data dot dtype. Now our audio is in mono format, ready for further processing. One common modification we might want to make is adjusting the volume. We can do this by multiplying each sample by a scaling factor. For example, data times equals 1.5 increases the volume by 50%. Multiplying by a decimal value converts the array to floating point numbers. So like before, we need to ensure the data remains in its original format. For this, we'll use NumPy's asType method, which is used to convert an array to a specified data type. We'll pass data.dtype to preserve the original format. On running the program again, we find the audio has been amplified. If we wanted to decrease the volume, we'd reduce the amplitude of each sample, multiplying by a value less than one. We can easily reverse the audio by slicing into the data array. Colon colon is a shorthand way of selecting all the elements. Specifying a step of minus one will create a new array by moving backwards through the sequence. This in effect flips the audio data so that when we run the program, it plays backwards. We can trim the audio by slicing into the data array. First, we'll specify start and end times in seconds. We can convert these times into sample indices by multiplying each by the sample rate. We'll create a trim sequence by slicing the data array between the start and end sample indices. This gives us a new sequence with just the portion of audio we want to keep. We can create audio loops using NumPy's tile function, which repeats a sequence a specified number of times to create a new array.
If we're working with stereo data, we should use a tuple to specify how many times we want to repeat the rows, the sequence of samples, while keeping just one instance of the columns to preserve the original stereo or mono structure. The classic analog effect of a tape speeding up or slowing down can be replicated simply by changing the sample rate. Multiplying the sample rate by 1.5 will speed up the audio and raise the pitch. We can decrease the sample rate by multiplying by a factor between 0 and 1 to slow down the audio and decrease the pitch. So what if we want to save our masterpiece? The wave module also includes a write function that allows us to write a numpy array to a new wave file. We must specify a name for the file we wish to write as the first argument, the sample rate of the audio as the second argument, and our array as the third argument. We've covered some basic methods for editing and manipulating audio files. If you're interested in more advanced techniques, let me know by commenting. Please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.